this fly is making me insane. I want to fling it. I, I want to fling a blight steel colossus at it. I want to punch it in its stupid I'm gonna, fly face. I'm going to move into strengths and weaknesses. Hey, this is the Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 445. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. Today, we're going to talk about an upgrade to one of Ryan's least successful decks. Now, hit our theme song! Huh? You heard me. <laughs> hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? I, w- I wonder when Editor Joe is going to bring in that video and if it's going to get me being all confused. <laughs> I hope so, because that was the best part of that whole intro. That's why I did it. Oh. And in answer to your question, a whole bunch is going down. We've got a very exciting deck to talk about. Some of the new hotness, a card mm-hmm. that you were very excited about, and a deck that I think people are going to be very interested in. we got some other magic-related topics we're going to get into. we got some stories to tell, some people to thank, but before we get to any of that... We have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com. They are source for all your gaming needs. Mm-hmm. And Pile of Bones Brewing Co. They're the second coolest thing to come out of Regina. And the official beer sponsor for CCO Sidewalk Slam Season 2 right here on YouTube. Oh, man. So much to unpack as per usual. Okay. Pile of Bones. Big thanks. Got the stunt beers on the set. Yeah, we're going to see them soon. I'm very excited. I we, forgot the chocolate stout. Yeah, we, that, that's okay. i got lots at home still. Okay, good. Yeah, we've sent spies in to the thing so that we're there in September and everybody comes out to hang out with us there. Man, it's going to be those pinball machines yep. and food that's good yep. and beer that's great yep. and freaking friends that are dope. We're like, that's us. I, uh, oh, I'm going to say we're eight out of tens for this one to, oh, come yeah. to encourage people to come. It's going to be a good ass time. Yes. Oh, man. You, w- you went right into Pile of Bones, and I, I had a thing to say about them, but we got to thank the business daddies first, FusionGamingOnline.com, oh, yeah. and let everybody know that the new promo code is going to be active with this episode. Ooh. CCO Summer. We're going back to CCO Summer. Because it is, in fact, summer. It is, in fact, summer and not winter. That is true. Yeah, lots of sweaty butt cracks around here yeah. lately. Man, we had a one of the hu- most humid heat waves we've had in saskatchewan in almost a decade yes it yeah i I know the uh what day on thursday was the most humid day in saskatoon in like the last 10 years yeah it's crazy it It was was, uh it it was was, i was playing ball that day it was like running from base to base was like swimming yeah it was crazy (laughs) you'd go out into the and i mean people who live in the land of the free especially like this is it the southeastern states like florida uh anywhere in the south really kind of the bayou areas we're yeah. just like they're like yeah you yeah, fr- yeah tell us more about humidity you <laughs> fucking casuals <laughs> yeah. but like it, it, we're not used to when you go outside you're instantly drenched in sweat that dude. isn't that hasn't been produced by your body dude, to the was, point that you can't actually sweat to cool yourself off it was oh. uh, it was so humid my foils curled the other way oh, yeah. <laughs> my foils flat I opened up my chaff box and all the foils had flattened out and the box isn't full anymore it's pretty cool hey extra storage yeah. in the humidity yeah. there we go okay we got the door of the studio open so if you see us do any of this yeah, there's, you, there's because there's flies in yeah, there's bucks <laughs> summer season you'd know if you if you're watching on youtube which you should be because <clears throat> editor joe works very hard to make us look really good and that's not easy yeah so i want to get uh, i want to get into the uh the deck a little bit and then i want to go back to pile of bones a little bit because i I have a personal feeling and connection to this deck, I think. Yeah. Because I think I'm going to build it. We were talking about it off air before we started. And it's like, are you going to do it? And, and, and I was like, I, like, think, uh, I think I'm going to. And then you tell me a play that you could, like like the magical Christmas land play that could happen. Yeah. And you sounded so pumped. If you don't build this deck, I'm going to be very unimpressed. I'm going to actually need to procure a lot of the cards for this deck. I don't have a lot of what I want to build go in this deck oh it's easy to find so let's uh cats out of the bag imskir iron eater this is um shit smear iron beater yes this is a five five legendary creech demon for red black six but, but uh hear us out here but wait out. there's more but wait there's more affinity for artifacts nah. so it's red black five five it, demon it's a five five for two yeah Okay. That, does it fly or trample or anything, it, or does it just fly? Does no, it... he's got more text, though. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. When he enters the battlefield, draw X, and you lose X, where X is half the number of artifacts you control. It's pretty good. So if you have six artifacts, you cast him for two. He's a 5-5. Five, five. You draw three, lose three. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
also. Oh, there's more. <laughs> of course, yeah, there's more. Of yeah, course it's there's Mahdi more. Ho, ho, ho. Of course, there's more. Red three sacrifice an artifact. Notice there's no tap there. Ooh. Imskir deals damage equal to the sacrifice artifact's mana value to any frickin' target. Ooh. So hey. this guy is a direct upgrade and power creep or whatever the word you want to use like strictly better i know that strictly better gets yeah. us in trouble on the internet yes but well strictly because it doesn't have uh, yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah, whatever strictly better than bosch iron golem and yeah. kind of reminiscent of Brian Stoutarm. That's the one I was thinking of because he has lifelink. Yes, and can fling guys, pay red, tap, and throw a creature, not an artifact, yeah. a creature, deal damage equal to that creature's power, not mana cost, and Brian's got lifelink. It's, this guy's got the opposite. Yeah. This guy, you bounce him or like sack and reanimate him over and over again and can draw your whole deck and you right. lose a bunch of life. <laughs> See, this one, before you were doing goblin grenade stuff with Brian Stardarm, yep. now you're just doing regular grenade. Man, if I could play Hatred in Brian Stardarm and just, like, be at 50 life, right? pay 40 of it to give my guy plus 40 plus 0 with Hatred and then fling and gain, like, 50 life back because I flinged a 50 power guy, can you imagine? And when I read Imskir, it's like, I want to do that, but that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not how it works. We're going to get into some of the big mana and some of like the uh, the big artifacts that we can fling. Here's here's a question for you and a, a question for all the, the watchers and listeners out there. I'm not saying that anybody in this room has ever done this. Okay. Because this is crazy. <laughs> but have you ever... Asking for a friend. Have you ever had a pay X life thing? Oh, yeah. And you go down to one life... <laughs> forgetting that your opponent has a goblin sharpshooter in play. Have you ever done that? Because, I mean, I haven't, of course. <laughs> but, like, have you ever done that? Where you're like, man, I'm going to blow these motherfuckers away. I and then say, you're dead instead. I want to say... Before the spell even resolves, because you've paid the life, and now you're dead. I want to say Phyrexian Processor. Is that the card that... In this I, hypothetical I, scenario. I will neither confirm or deny the card that was utilized to make giant XX minions. I will not confirm what the card may have been in this situation that I was not party to firsthand. Mm. But uh, yes, it was me. Yes, it was Phyrexian Processor. Yes, it was a Goblin Sharpshooter. And no, I didn't get to make a token. And you did die. I did immediately die, yes. You know what? The last two times I've seen a Phyrexian processor, both of them were set to 20. I think 20 is the number, isn't it? No. No? 39? 39 is the number. <laughs> yeah. Well, the number is X, first. where X is your current life total, minus one. Minus one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the um, algebra with the Phyrexians. Yeah. <laughs> Just give one of them lifelink. He'll be fine. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Oh, yeah, it's or totally to fling one of the Brian Stout arm. Very... Immediately go back up it's, to it's, the it's same It's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. It's fine. It'll be fine, I promise. Sure. Yeah. So I guess if you want to pick any of those up, CCO Summer, new promo code, you're going to get a discount. Imskir, I need to probably go out and find a lot of the cards that I want to play in this deck. I'm sure you can. It's there, fine. There's lots of stuff in here that isn't... I'm not going to say it's common to get, but it's not expensive to find once you find yeah, it. Yeah, and we're going to ta tackle that in the budget section. And here's my commitment. Here's my commitment to the nation. Oh, shit. You know, uh, Are you gonna, signing me up for something right now? No, okay. uh, though I could. Oh. Uh, no, yes, I am. Oh. And you'll hear what it is, and you'll appreciate it okay. very much. <laughs> A little while ago, I made the commitment that I'm going to build the CCO Raw Dog deck, right? Right. I made the Grima Worm Tongue Secret Lair Misprint Aristocrats deck. You've played against it. Yep. It's fine. It's fine. Right? It, it. Lots of three and four drops kind of clogging up the early game. Not very good, but sure. Forgot to put Soul Ring in on the Maiden Voyage. It's kind of <laughs> shitty. I'm going to make a new commitment. Oh, shit. That by September, when we go to face-to-face -face games Regina and the Pile of Bones after party takeover, uh -huh. I'll have this deck built. Okay. So that gives me some time to do some research and kind of dig through my collection for some of like the real stinkers that I want to play mm -hmm. and order some stuff from Fusion that I'm going to need, get some play testing in with, with the locals right. and uh, the CCO dude bros, and then have it ready to just gank 
all the CCO nation that's going to be in Regina. And I'm going to have 7 out of 10 Necro Bloom. I will sign up for this. There we go. And we're yeah. going to do all that when we go to the Pile of Bones Brewing Co. Uh, tap House Room, whatever they call it, in Regina, play pinball. And oh, shit. I just discovered their new seasonal beer last night. I went to the yard in Schlagen. What is it? Oh, you know that I'm a cucumber beer guy, right? Oh, God damn it. They got like this cucumber citrus beer. I had two. Just two. What a travesty. I'm going to... I'm happy you enjoy it. Oh, yes. Then that's I'm, why we're friends. Yeah, I'm happy that you enjoy it. And for people who like that sort of thing, you will enjoy this. It's not for me. That's fine. It's so refreshing. It's like... <laughs> and you'll like this. It's like drinking beer and eating a salad at the same time. <laughs> and that's why it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get some and we'll put them on the stunt beers it, next week. Because it actually, it actually does taste a lot like cucumber. I did try it. Cuc I did. Yeah, cucumber beer, man. I Frick, did. I love that. It's, I had so many cucumber beers when we went to Edmonton. Me and Rusty Trom Jones. Or, just, I mean, Vancouver. It's just not my thing. It's not It's not my jam. Oh, yep. well. Some people aren't citrus beer guys. A couple, bunch of people at work, not citrus in their beer guys. Yep. Unless it's like Corona with a lime. Yeah, yeah. But like... I, I like me like an orange or a, like a not a lemon, but like a, you know, a citrusy yeah. flavor. Yeah. In my... You know what? Rebecca puts lime in like all of her beers, unless she gets an orange beer, right? Mm. And and man, I like a good lime beer, especially like a like a Mexican import beer, right? Like a Corona or a whatever. Sure. Corona, not my favorite though. Pacifico, though. That's a pretty good beer. A Corona? T smells like it t or tastes like it smells yeah. and it smells like armpit sweat it's got different uh, it's got different preservatives in it i think but uh she puts lime in everything and i you know what i just sometimes need a nice crisp pile of bones soup can lager <laughs> sometimes i just need that with no lime no lime so anyways i had a, i had some questions for you oh shit okay a I little wasn't... bit of a continuation on what we were talking about on yesterday's new and improved lengthened pre-show yeah we hit some important stuff in the pre-show yeah we were talking about a little bit of like the meta shift yeah in in our local community in the last few sets yeah and if you've watched that if you've seen meta shifts over the last quick recap yeah thunder junction Mati ho 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 assassin's creed have you noticed a shift locally you the the watcher listener have you noticed a shift in your local meta have you seen these decks showing up more often than not. Do you see a huge glut of new cards taking over the decks? Yep. And I thought that I was going to with Modern Horizons 3. And I did a Commander at Populum on it where I took every single one of my decks, cut one card for a piece of removal. Because there was such powerful creatures in Mari Ho Ho Ho. And the first EDH and M, EDH Night Magic that I sat down after it was released. Remember we were we were listening to the table over yeah. and you were like, oh, Ben's got a Ulamog with 11 plus one counters on it, right? Like <laughs> yeah. he's going to attack Annihilate 11. Yeah. Like he won that game. And I'm like, that's exactly the reason that I did this exercise and put a, a removal spell in each one of my decks. And then the last time I was playing Magic with said Ben and FU Alex, they're both playing Eldrazi decks. That said, Alex already had an Eldrazi deck. Now Truth. he has two, right? But like you yesterday, saying that you haven't really noticed a meta shift, I have not noticed the meta shift as egregiously as I thought I would with the, the powerful creatures in Modern Horizons 3. And I like that because it, it gives me hope and confidence that magic is going to like stay trending in a direction that I like and works for my local area, yeah. right? Like everybody's always, the sky is falling all the time. Yeah. Power creep is going to ruin magic and the price is going to ruin magic, uh, which is a different conversation, MTG finance, right? But uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. feel like anything is different. I think for me, I think that the I have 24 decks, functioning <laughs> commander decks. Wow. And Mati Ho Ho Ho, either... Upgraded to foil or added a new card to all 24 of them. That's the first set wow. that's ever done that. Hey, that that isn't a distinct shift. That's just... But that is, like, significant. Yeah, that's indicative that there's some good-ass stuff, yep. right? And granted, like, it wasn't, like, I upgraded my lands in one deck and, like, just, you know, just little things. Yeah. But it, it did happen. I think that the reason that we're not seeing a lot of this stuff come up 
is a combination of two of the things that people actually complain a lot about, which is price and like product fatigue, where like people have checked out a little bit because there's so much and mm -hmm. it costs so much. And I'm not, I'm, I'm using so much air quotes because like it's what it kind of it's, always it has ain't been. free. Right? Yeah. It's not a free, like, it's not like going for a jog in the park is a free way to get exercise. Exactly. Versus paying for a gym membership. Precisely. I can accomplish the same thing. There's no equivalent to that in magic unless you go and, like, scrounge commons from the freaking floor of your LGS, right? Yeah, or you, you get the uncom you get the chaff pile, like we talked yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah. And I think that a lot of it's just like, well, there's this one card that I like that sort of is good in my deck, so I'll get this one... A lot of people aren't like combing through every single set so that they can go through and buy this checklist of cards to upgrade all their decks. Yes. Because there's, by the time you've got them all in the mail from Fusion, sleeved them, made cuts, put them in your deck, there's got a, to your play group, <laughs> and set. actually drawn the card. Yes. There's two new sets out. I've listened to friend of the show, Dana Roach on EDH RecCast say, I cut this card from this deck before I even had a chance to play it yep. for a new card. Yep. Right? And I have I have done that as well in yeah. two or three decks that I play often. There's a couple that I'll bring to EDH and I'm like every week or every other week, just I hope I get to play it because really, I'm really enjoying yeah, it. I'm yeah, really yeah. high on it right now. And there have certainly been cards that I've put in in a deck that I play once or twice or three times a week that I never got to see and then cut it for something else. Dang. Because of the 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 just constant hit of products so what you're saying is you're exactly like dana roach no i don't <laughs> play manolith in every oh, day. oh okay good good uh, thank you for making that distinction yes good hey you know who texted me the other day joey schultz said hi oh dang you know, yeah, he's got a guy. little he's he's working on a thing he needs our help with oh me too ah uh, well no me too yeah Wait, he, he joey did. you he did say Me you too. guys. He did say you guys. Yeah. That's I right. assume he meant you, even though I was sitting with my wife. I want to be there too. Okay. Because I'm the one that's there. Well, I like Joey. He's a good guy. Yeah. Seven out of 10 at best. Yeah. Let's talk about this deck. Let's talk it's, about shit smear. Speak, yeah. Speaking of good guys. Yeah. And, and, and shit smears. <laughs> Drake Smith. Or Drake Smith. Drake Smith. Drake Smith. Drake, Smith. Drake Frost. <laughs> Drake Frost is our dude. Drake Frost. Yep. Recently married Drake Frost. Yes. Yep. Wrestling champion of all time. And California resident, all around good guy. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I want to call Shit Smear Iron Eater. I want to call him Poop Daddy in memory of Drake's Poop Daddy story he told us where he jumped on the guy and he who was himself. in the wrong part of the wrestling ring. Yeah. And Drake, not small. No, not Drake, a small big, human. Big guy, big guy. Even for a wrestler, big guy. Big guy, big guy. Yeah, lands on guy. Yeah, makes guy poop himself. Yeah, like a tube of toothpaste. Yeah, and you can't put the toothpaste back. And, and you certainly can't. No. White shorts. Yeah, not anymore. Taco Bell. Correct. Not good. No, nobody wants that. We'll show it. We'll show uh, producer Gary the uh, the video <laughs> after, and he's gonna laugh. <laughs> yes, that's a, he, that was a good story. Yeah, very funny story. Okay, so we've got. Imskir Iron Eater Fling Artifact Dot Deck. So we're looking at artifacts that cost lots that probably we can make cost less or we can bring back to fling again. Yes. Now, if we're playing artifacts that cost less, or I mean cost lots, we got to power them out. We got 14 mana rocks here. Oh, so many. Uh, I'll give them a quick read. Everflowing Chalice, Coveted Jewel, that's... Sure, we're gonna call that. It costs six. It costs. And six. That's why we're playing it. Because if somebody's gonna, if you can't get it back, if somebody's coming for it, and you figure, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to get this thing back, you fling it. You fling it, yeah. But it does tap for three mana. Yeah. Cursed mirror, wayfarer's bauble, arcane signet, blink moth urn, mycosynth wellspring, thran dynamo, moon silver key, that's which good one. searches for another artifact, right? Yep. Soul ring, leaden mirror. Hey, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, yeah. I play that card. Iron Mirror, that's the, yep. those are the mana mirrors. Yep. Racto Signet, of course. Talisman of Indulgence is the last one. Yep. So lots of mana there. All the ones you expect to see. And then a Dink Mouth Urn, which is fun to see. I'm happy I got to see that. Uh, yeah, that gives you mana, right? At the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if Dink Mouth Urn is untapped, that player adds colorless to their mana pool for each artifact they control. 
dangerous in today's in the the the, the days of treasures and map tokens and scrap tokens yep. and blood tokens yep. and all these artifact tokens. Dangerous card to play, Blink Malthorn. It should be noted that we are playing Vault of Whispers, Dark Steel Citadel, and Great Furnace. Those are the artifact lands in our colors. Yes. So we can we can do probably more with yeah, Blink given Malthorn. that we're an artifact deck, we'll probably get yeah. more. But there are people who are going to get like three, four, five mana on turn four or five with this, just because they're playing magic today. Yes, I love that we're doing an artifact deck and it's got black in it. This is like a lot of artifact decks these days have red in them. Yeah, lots of them have blue in them, right? Some Urza decks, they're like Grixis decks, but the, those don't feel like black decks to me. Right. And this this commander has like the blackest line of text on it, right? Like draw cards, lose life, Yep. right? This is a black deck. Every set has a card that's black that says draw some number, lose some number, blah, blah, blah. blah. So let's take, a, let's take a little bit of a look at how black is gonna make even more mana than what we were just talking about. In the melt it down section, we've Ooh, got a burnt no, offering. No, let's, uh, let's start down here. We'll start with the not black stuff and then we'll go to the black stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so we'll okay. start with the KCI, Quark Clan Ironworks. Yep. It'll be on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. If you don't know what KCI does, neither does anybody else. You sack artifacts to add two. But yes. There's a whole bunch of tricksy shit you can do with that. So Yeah, no, it's fine. It, this is Ashnod's altar, but for artifacts. Yes, it does what it does in this particular set. When when we for have deck. like a, a, a Mycosynth Wellspring or an Icker Wellspring, they do stuff when they ETB and when they leave the battlefield they, they, or they, enter the bin, ETB. Yeah, the ETB or ETB, they do the thing. So if we cast one to draw a card and immediately sacrifice it to make our two mana back, we're gonna draw another card and make two mana. That's pretty good. Yeah. We've got a Goblin Welder and a Goblin Engineer. Those are like tutors that are gonna go and find your stuff. Yeah, Welder will switch a artifact that's in play to one that's in a graveyard of any player. Just by the by, you can you yeah. can get tricksy with that. Yeah, sometimes. sorry, I, I I I read those wrong. Yeah. And then welder or engineer, sorry, will find you an artifact and bin it, I believe. Uh, and, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. Yep. Yeah. And then you can sack an artifact to get one back. Correct. And the theory is, is like I can sacrifice any piece of crap that I have late game and get back the eight or ten mana cost thing that I already flinged, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Then we've got a slow bad goblin tinkerer, sacrifice an artifact, target artifact becomes indestructible till end of turn. Cool idea. Yeah, like if that. I've got my 12 drop artifact that somebody goes to shatter, I can sacrifice some piece of crap yep. and save my thing. Then, now we're, now we're playing black stuff. Ruthless Technomancer. Have we ever played this card before? I have. I don't think we have on the show, though. I remember saying this card is good. It's a 2-4 human wizard for black 3. When it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice another creature you control. If you do, create treasure tokens, yeah. which I think are more powerful in this deck. Absolutely they are. Treasure tokens equal to the creature's power. Yep. That's really good. Also, you can go black 2 sack X artifacts, return target creature card with power X from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yes. That's really good. Yes. This card is good in this deck. It's very, very good. I might play this card in my version of this deck. You probably should. Yeah. Then we've got the aforementioned Burnt Offering. I like, the, I like the Wicker Man in the art on that. That's really cool. I like that. I'm so surprised that nobody knows what this card is. This card, this card bangs. Okay. Instant... Additional cost, sack a creature. It costs black, just straight up. Yeah, black and, for an instant. And you get any combination of red and or black mana equal to that creature's um, mana cost. Cool. So if I could sacrifice like a 12 drop, I'll just make 12 mana for one. Well, you could sacrifice your commander, make eight, replay him for four, and oh. still have four. Oh, and draw so a bunch good. of cards. No, he's got affinity for artifacts, though, so it wouldn't be four. It'd be two. It'd be two because affinity takes uh, takes into account the uh, the other the cost reduction that is needed. Neat. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, we've got a sacrifice, which is like the same thing. Yes. Black mana equal to casting cost when you sacrifice the creature. Also an instant. Yeah. That's very good. Those are very cool. Yeah. I don't know why we're not playing a little card called Songs of the Damned as well. Instant for black gives you black mana equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard. Eh. I think eh. under regular scenarios in this deck, it's probably better than Dark Ritual. 
which yeah. probably doesn't belong in the deck. Yeah. But that card is good, and I think that's a little bit of a hidden gem in Commander. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So that's how we're making mana. We've got all of those things. We've got, like, a couple random, I, I think, like, sections we got to get through. Though, yeah, we right? got, let's do the removal section here. Sure. Let's do that one. So for Scrap at all, we have Damnation, yep. Spine of Ishsaw, Blasphemous Act, and Noxious Gear Hulk. I feel like those are mostly... One of two of those are artifacts that cost six or more. Yes, which is of note. Yep, and I think the spine of Ishsaw comes back in some yep. fashion. When it's put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you return it to your hand. Yeah, and when you cast it, you destroy a target permanent. It's pretty good. So that one's really good in this deck because you just sacrifice the seven, literally anything. You use you use it to kill something, then you sack it to kill someone, and then you get it back to do that again. Yes, sir. That's pretty good. Yep, I like that lots. We've got some tools of the trade. Tools These, of the trade. Common, very powerful artifact cards. First one, Nettle Cyst. Living weapon, equipped creature gets plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. We don't care about enchantments, only artifacts in this particular case. Yep. And there's lots of them. Now we've got uh, Nettle Cyst 2.0 or uh, 1.0. Ver version one, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Cranial plating, plus one for each artifact you control. Yep. And you uh, can equip that for free. That's correct. And or, sorry, two. You you can equip speed. that at instant speed. And then Cranial Ram, we also playing. That's a new one from Mahdi Ho Ho Ho. It's essentially the same thing, but it has living weapon and costs red instead of red black instead of two. Yeah. And then we've got a Mirror Works. Whenever another non token artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay two. If you do, you create a token that's a copy of it. That's neat. I like that. Oh, man. Can you imagine just going like cranial plating, pay two, equip both? Yeah, cranial for plating. 60. <laughs> Die. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I could play Cranial Plating in my Bryon Stardarm deck. Can't. Now I can. <laughs> <laughs> now I can. Now I can. We're there, baby. Okay, get her backers. Get her backers. Uh, not, not really, but... Well, they get cards back into your hand. Sure. They get her backer cards into your hands. <laughs> Resupply is you're out of stuff, you're going to get more stuff. Yes. Stuff is cards. Yes. N N Nihil? Nile? Nile Spellbomb. Nile Spellbomb. You can uh, sacrifice it to exile all cards from target player's graveyard. Sure. When you do, you pay black, you draw a card. Neat. It's fine. Yeah. Stinging Study. Stinging Study and Imposing Grandeur. Both cards that I'm really excited I know about now that I didn't know existed prior Bro, you, to making this show. You didn't know about Stinging Study? No. Nope. This card's freaking good. I know. Okay. Draw X and lose X, where X is the mana value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the zone. Keep in mind, ours is eight. Yeah, the eight is like lots. I'll, at some point, I feel like, okay, draw one, lose one is like, I don't care. Right. Draw five, lose five, or draw four, lose four is like, oh man, I don't want to lose four life for four cards. Yeah, you do. Ugh. Are you kidding me? But draw eight, lose eight all day. Every day because you eight, do that. Eight is so many. It, let's, let's look at it like this. How okay. many dollars, how many units of currency does it cost for you to play a Wheel of Fortune? How many dollars? How many dollars does it cost? I don't know, like 400. And what that does is draws you a new mid of seven yes. after you discard your old mid, but all of your opponents get to do the same. Yes. This one draws you fucking eight, and you don't have to discard shit. This is a good card. I will take eight life to save those hundreds of dollars. I'm going to blow your mind right now. Do it. I'm going to blow your mind. Do it. Look at the card type of Stinging Study. It's an instant. It's an instant. <laughs> You're going to go, go. I'm going to go. Tap five, draw eight. I'll start my turn now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a freaking good card. It's a good card. Yeah. It's a good one right there. And imposing grandeur, uh, each player may discard their hand and draw cards equal to the greatest mana value of commander they own. Yep. That's it, good. That's pretty good. Sorcery speed, though. That, sorcery speed, but it's pretty good. Yep. It's like optional wheel if you have a big fatty commander. And I or do. Or like a... Like, if you play a lot of these low to the ground, like, shitty new ones, like, oh, do you so discard my nine cards and draw three? Nobody's yeah. going to do that. Nobody's going to do that, no. Yeah. And in our in our artifact deck that that has freaking black cards in it, we'll just get them all back. Yeah, we'll just play them anyway. Yeah. Icker Wellspring, ETBs, ETBs, draw a card. Morbid Curiosity, sack a creature, draw cards equal to the 
mana cost yep. of, I, of that guy. Again, remember, our commander costs eight, but our commander also only costs two. Yes, sir. Keep that in mind. Pyrite Spell Bomb, sack it to deal damage, sack it to draw a card, and Mephitic Drought. Draft. 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 Hmm. We've never played this card. Nope. This is black one for an artifact when Mephitic Draft enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard, draw a card, lose a life. ETB, ETB, draw a card, lose yep, life. Yep, that's good. That's good. Okay. Oh, damn flies. There, yeah, there's the fly. It's there's so the fly. It's so loud I can hear it. I'll bet you the mic is picking that thing up. Look at that thing. I know. That's a big one. Jesus. Cost reducers. Cost or reducers. Cheaters. <laughs> cheaters. I would certainly play more cheaters in my version or things that cost reduce by themselves. Mm. And I've got some suggestions when we get to the budget section. Sure. Ugin the Ineffable. That's colorless spells cost two less. Semblance Anthem spells that share a card type with whatever you exile when you cast it cost less. It's got imprint. You exile an artifact or an artifact creature even better and then all your stuff costs less. It's yeah. good. Perforos bl Blondes Blooded. He's blonde. No, he's not. Blondes Bruzzed. <laughs> Shut up. Sneak Attack. But he's an enchantment, so... Um, so uh, well, that one card cares yeah, about it. Nettle sis cares about it. Yes. And then Chisgoria Forge Tyrant. Affinity for artifacts, nine drop dragon. Ooh. We don't care about but that. Affinity though. for artifacts, so he's red, red, red. Yep. Flying haste, five four. When he attacks, exile the top five cards of your library. You may cast an artifact spell from among them. If you do, it has affinity for artifacts. Cool. Yes. And then I would also uh, I, I have another recommendation Ooh. Uh, when we get to that part. Okay. That's kind of like Chisgoria. He's like the uh, the $3 version of this other card that I'm going to talk about. But what an ass. Now, what do we do with all this crap? Sh we've got one more section, and we'll go, go fast. Beacon of Unrest, Scrap Mastery, Pia's Revolution, Duretti Scrap Savant, Trash for Treasure, and Mishra Tamer of Makfawa all get stuff back from your graveyard. What was that last one? Mishra, Tamer of Makfawa. Never heard of it. Oh, yeah. That one does not exist. What and the hell is that crap? Is this catching not, on? Did not make a, 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 an appearance on Sidewalk Slam. Yeah, man. Drake must have watched Sidewalk Slam, and he just... Yeah, and that's a cool made-up card that guy was playing. I think I should play that, too. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. So what are we doing? Okay. We got some fatties here. Wait, because if you're going to play artifacts, you play artifa artifatties. Artif yeah. Artifatties. <laughs> oh, I like that. I'm a fan of that. That's, I'm a fan of fatties. That's a good one. Don't uh, take that out of context. Worm Coil Engine. Number one card I would put in this deck. Yep. This, uh, you sack it. You deal six to somebody. You get your two three threes. You bring this thing back from your graveyard to play. You do it again. You keep making yep. dudes. That thing's an army in a can and six damage on a stick. It's awesome. Yeah, six damage on a big fat stick. Yep. Mirror Enforcer. This doesn't feel like a very powerful card, but when I can go cast it for zero, because mm -hmm. it costs seven, but it's got affinity for artifacts, that does actually feel very powerful. So it's going to deal seven after you get some chip-ins with now, it. Four fours for zero that block and then do seven are pretty good. Yeah, we also have a Frogmite four drop. 2-2 two, two, Affinity for Artifacts. Yeah, those, same kind of gimmick. Those two cards go hand in hand in every single Affinity deck that's ever existed, right? Yes. Yeah. Have you lost any games to those cards? Uh, not recently, but I have. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yes. <laughs> me too. Okay. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. That's, uh, a, that's gross. Yeah, that is kind that's of... I'm not going to Google that at all. He's got Prototype, so you can cast him as a 3-3 three, three for 3. Right. Or you can pay seven, and he's a seven-five with menace, lifelink, and ward. Pay life equal to his power. Dang. The <laughs> trick is we cost we cast him for three, and then we fling him for seven. Yes, that's the trick, right? Yes. Or okay. you could also pay play him for seven and fucking beat in for seven and God and damn. get lifelink to pay for us like well, recasting it, our commander all the time. It has lifelink anyway. It always has the lifelink and menace. The oh. prototype just affects the casting cost and power and toughness. I don't even know we've played a prototype card oh. before on the show. So prototype is like you have a vastly reduced cost for a usually vastly smaller creature, but it still does all the same stuff. Some of them will have 
uh, abilities. We're actually playing a couple where if you don't prototype them, they'll get more stuff. But we'll get to those in a bit. Oh. Prototype's a cool ability. I, I suppose if I read the the reminder text, you may cast this spell with a different mana cost, color, and size. It keeps its abilities and types. Oh, Phyrexian Worm. It was one of those cards that I, one of those abilities I think that we just passed over because there's so many products coming out, so many keywords, so many rules, so much stuff. Yeah. Who gives a shit about this one? Like, it doesn't matter. Well, that one's good in this deck. Yes. Meteor Golem. ETBs destroys in a permanent. It's a seven drop. Skitter Beam Battalion. That's the other one I was talking about. It all. It's a, it's a four, four for four fucking nine <laughs> or it's a two two for red red three it's got trample it's got haste when it enters the battlefield if you cast it create two tokens that are copies of it oh now that's cor- really good now correct me if i'm wrong but tokens that are copies of cards have all aspects of the card right i believe it has the same mana cost as the card that seems pretty good doesn't it, it? seems pretty good especially when like we could maybe sacrifice one of them to pay our commander's activated ability two times to do 18 damage yes <laughs> let's give imskir lifelink we could that's pretty good. We could do that. That's really good because then if we sack and replay him, like sacrifice him to himself. Right. And get all the mana. Like, sac- He's not an artifact. Sorry. Though. Sacrifice him to sacrifice or burnt offering. Right. Replay him with that mana and mm-hmm. redraw all those cards. Mm-hmm. And then if we have enough artifacts, we can do that again and replay him again. Mm-hmm. And we would lose all that life because we have all these artifacts, right? Yeah. But we would... So fill up our hand with so many artifacts. And if we have lifelink on them, mm-hmm. we'll just fling something and gain it all back. Yeah. Oh, see, this is my jam. <laughs> this guy, this big stupid looking guy is just my jam. Okay. <laughs> Ruin grinder. That's a sex act we all drink. He's a 7-4 for red 5 menace. When it dies, each player may discard their hand and draw seven cards. Neat. And then it's got mountain cycling for two. This is fine. This is a fine card. It's a fine card indeed. (laughs) Metal work colossus. 10-10 for 11. Now we're getting into the the big swing and dongs. Costs X less to cast where X is the total mana cost of non-creature artifacts you control. So this guy costs zero. It's a 10-10 for probably, I'm going to say one. If I'm paying one for this guy, it's still I'm pretty good. I'm cutting him out of my deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying one. Okay, and then you've got sack two artifacts, return metalwork colossus from your graveyard to your hand. So you, you fling him for 11 damage, you get him back from your graveyard by tapping two trash, you pay none, you fling him again. Yeah. Yep. Y- it's pretty good. This guy could. Of like this guy could just combo and kill everybody all at once. Yes. If you have enough artifacts. Or mana. Yeah, you got to do a little bit of work though, and I think there's some setup involved there. That might sure. be the 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 kind of route that I take. Sure, sure, okay. Worm coil larva. Remember worm coil engine? Yep. This is the same thing, but a little bit smaller. That little bitty baby worm coil engine. Yeah. Mirror battle sphere seven drop four seven. You get four mirrors when it ETBs. When it attacks, it gets plus X and deals damage equal number of mirrors you control. This might be the reason we're playing the mana mirrors. And the mana mirrors are also artifacts that are fine. Yes, they're 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 fine. Yeah, so this and guy's good. Dudes that block. There there there's reasons for them to be there. And then the final one with prototype frog mirror enforcer. This is from Mari Ho Ho Ho. It's got affinity for artifacts, and it's both a frogmite and a mirror enforcer, stapled together. So yes. you can pay it as a two two for what will be actually one mana. You yep. do have to spend mana on it. Or you can pay it as a 4-4 for free. Yes. Pretty good. I don't know why anybody would ever cast it for one mana as a 2-2. I'm sure it's a draft thing. We don't play draft. Yeah, no. Whatever. So, final category. Oh, we got a Felwar Stone. We didn't mention that. Yeah, there's also a Felwar Stone. (laughs) Untagged. I assume he forgot to add it to the mana artifact stuff. Last thing we're talking about here. We got win cons. And and we got a, whatever this is, I'm going to... We got a Ugin's Nexus also. Oh, is that like take an extra turn or something? Uh, if another player would take an extra turn, they don't. And then if it would be put into your bin from the grave or from the battlefield, you take an extra turn. Oh, that's good. So you, I don't think you exile it either. So you sack it to deal five damage to somebody. Then you yep. use your mirror welder to switch an art a treasure token with your Ugin's Nexus. 
and then you do it again and 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 again until you're out of treasure tokens. Or anything. Yes. Because treasure tokens, like I mean, until you're out of artifacts. On your will probably win you the game. On your extra turns, if you just kept doing that kind of thing, I can fling my artifacts at your creatures to kill them. Yes. And I'll just hit you with my commander until you're dead. Yeah, that could work too. Yeah, with like a nettle cyst on it or whatever. So you're taking like 11 damage every time I hit you. That's not going to take long. Yeah, you could do that too. So that's kind of a win con if you can kind of set up that scenario. Even if you can't, taking an extra turn usually late in the game is going to win you the game. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's... Or or get you out of a hole and put you in a position where you're not going to lose, which is basically winning. Oh, yeah, not losing, the same as winning. That's true. You heard it here first. Okay, salvaging station. Okay, now this is going to get complicated, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) It's a six drop. You tap it to return target non-creature artifact with converted mana cost one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever a creature is put into the graveyard from play, you can untap salvaging station. So I can get something back, Mm -hmm. maybe like a, a flare husk, or like a pyrite spell bomb yeah. that deals damage when I sacrifice it. Right. Goes back to the battlefield. Then I sacrifice a thing to untap salvaging station, sacrifice the pirate spell bomb again, mm-hmm. I can tap to get it back again, right? Mm-hmm. So you can see how you can start to develop loops. We've got a flare husk that costs one and it's a living weapon equipment. It's essentially a one, one for one. And then once the one, one for one eats shit, you can pay two to equip the flare husk somewhere else. Yes. We've got a marionette master, which is an aristocrat type thing. So when our... Artifactocrat is what we call that. Yeah, when our our germ from the flare husk getting flinged dies. Uh, no, because this triggers on artifacts, doesn't it? Yes. Oh, man. See, this is why it's getting complicated. We've got a Bolus's Citadel yeah. because we can just pay life instead of mana now. That's right. pretty good. We've got an Ether Flux Reservoir because somehow with all these cards, we're going to loop them and gain our life back. And probably it has to do with Sensei's Divining Top getting sacrificed and then getting it back. Yes. Oh, Bolus's Citadel and Divining Top with a, with a cost reducer lets us infinitely cast our Sensei's Divining Top, right? Yes. And then we can Ether Flux people to death. Yes. So this is a damn dirty combo deck. Yes. Okay. That's why you like it. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can beat, you can fling, you can do all that shit, but then game's got to end. So just giant sky beating them all. This fly is making me insane. I want to fling it. I I want to fling a blight steel colossus at it. I want to punch it in its stupid fly face. I'm going to move into strengths and weaknesses. Strengths and weaknesses. And, And you hit them up. Major potential to beat face. Oh, yeah. Huge artifact, guys. And there's yeah. not even a Blightsteel Colossus. There's not a Dark Steel in here. There's nope. no Excalibur. There's no Ember Cleave. Nope. There's no freaking. Um, what's what's the guy that gives all your artifacts affinity for artifacts? That guy? Uh, Mycosynth Golem? Maybe. That? That could be there, too. Th- that That's the card. Keep in mind that affinity stacks, right? Sure. Yeah, I think if something has affinity and you give it affinity again, does it cost two less? Is that how that works? Uh, or no. Is that just some? That's just that's just the Colossus we do have in here because he has not affinity. So major potential to beat. Yep. It feels like you can squeeze a lot into this deck. Yes. Combo artifact dot deck like real dirtly goblin knee welder marionette masters type type stuff. Yep. Brian Stoutarm shit. Uh, mono black like sack and reanimate my commander to like cycle through my whole deck type thing yep. i can do all these kinds of things yes and what's really cool if you take away all those cards i just mentioned uh-huh. you could build this deck for pretty cheap <laughs> <laughs> yes you could because uh-huh. artifacts that cost a bunch are very plentiful yeah and you could just play all of them yes yep and Doretti, like Doretti scraps some out that's like a real deck Oh, yeah. Like, it's a real deck, and it all of the things that go in that deck can go in here. And it yep. doesn't have to be all about flinging, like, 25-cost artifacts. Yep. You could just play some value shit that you can recur to turn off. But you could still you could play this as a dirty, rotten, stinking control deck if you want to. Yeah, yeah. And you right on your commander, right on your commander, you have card draw, like, in the zone. Yep. So when you run out, you just get it all back. You yeah. just fill up. 
refill right? that hand. That's yeah. really good. Now, moving over to the weaknesses. And yeah. I know this firsthand because Brian Stoutarm is like this. Yep. I could accidentally draw the big half of my deck. Mm -hmm. And if I don't draw even the 13, 14, 15 pieces of ramp in the deck. Which isn't uncommon. If I don't draw those, or if I don't draw those in multiples, I kind of do nothing for turns one, two, three, and four. And that happens a lot of the time. Like I keep a one lander or, sorry, I keep a three lander or three lander even with a mana rock and Brian Stoutarm, then I draw six drop, then I draw an Avacyn, then I draw like a Sarah's freaking avatar. And it's like, oh man, all of these spells cost eight. And I drew them instead of drawing my third and fourth and fifth mana. Yep. Ugh. Yeah, it's no, it's no way to be. And we've all been in situations like that. And they say, ooh, play more card draw. But sometimes it just happens. And the variance on this deck you're going to find will... The, it's going to vary wildly. And you're going to find the exact opposite of that, where you have a thousand mana and jack shit to do with it. Yeah. Like, oh man, I can totally fling this two mana artifact 18 times a turn. Does that kill you? Nah, man. Mm. Oh. Mm. Right? Like, mm. And you will hit up situations like that, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, another strength of the deck I would suggest is what I like to say about a lot of decks is this is very tunable. Yeah, you can take this up a notch quite easily. You can play the the Titans, like Ryan said. You can add a, like I hate to say it, a Dockside Extortionist would certainly have a good spot in this deck. Ooh, because you get ma mass treasures. Yeah, D Duretti Ingenious Iconoclast goes in here really, oh. really good too. You know what card I like in this deck is um, the one where if you control ten treasures, you win. Uh, Revel and Riches is is that what it is? I think so. Whenever a creature dies, I get a treasure. Yep. At the beginning of my upkeep, if I have 10, I win. Yes. Okay, so I fling my guy at your guy. Yep. Two treasures. Two treasures. Yep. And also represents a win con and gives me treasures that we've demonstrated, I think, are, are going to be very good in the deck. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you discounts on your commander, and once he's in play, you can use them to play the spell that you've yeah draw really right? good. Very really good. good in the deck. And if you don't want to use it for win cons, like, like a lot of people say... I want to play this card just for like the aristocratic kind of nature of it. I'm not sure. trying to win by having 10 treasures because I think that feels cheap or whatever. Sure. You could just do that and use your freaking treasures as they're intended in the deck, right? No, for the record, nobody believes you when you say that. Uh, nobody believes you. Usually they don't. They yeah. will never believe you yeah, ever. Usually they don't. Not ever. Especially if you're playing a deck that's all about like sacking dudes to kill other dudes. Nobody believes you. <laughs> nobody believes you. <laughs> Okay, this particular version, this is the last weakness that I'm going to kind of blend it into the budget section. Okay. Hashtag MTG Finance, baby. Ah, shit. Yeah, this is expensive. This particular version, Drake's deck. Yeah, we assume he has this in real life because there's all the foils and the special printings and all that kind of yes. thing. Yes. So it's hard to get a actual gauge of how much this deck is worth because it's not mono red or gruel, so I don't have as... Yeah. steel trappy knowledge of how much the cards cost and and this particular deck is missing a few things that i've mentioned it doesn't have an ember cleave which is a big time finisher equipment gives your guy plus whatever and double strike and can be cost reduced equal to number of attacking creatures yes very powerful card to help you win games like like uh cranial ram and and um mm -hmm. whatever i guess those are budget versions of ember cleave yep it doesn't have an excalibur which is a 12 drop, but costs less. That's from the new Assassin's yeah, Creed set. It'll cost eight less in this deck because it's the total value of legendary dudes you have, or historic permanence, I guess. So it could cost free. It could I'm, cost I'm, free. I didn't look through to see how many legendary artifacts there are, but I'm sure they're in here, just happenstancely, right? It's just how the world works. Um, wait, how does it cost reduce? We got to look this card up. Historic permanence. Well, artifacts are historic. They don't need to be legendary. Oh, yeah, never mind. No, you're right. You're right. X less to cast, where X is the total mana value of historic permanents you control. Artifacts, legendaries, sagas. No, never mind. It's free. It's free. And it's going to deal It's gonna deal uh, plus 10 to you by attacking. Yep. And then it's going to deal 12 to you when I fling it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really freaking good. And if I play a Yawgmoth's Will, I'll just cast it for free again. <laughs> Well, now we've now we've gone over the budget again. Yes, we have keep, gone. Keep in mind, Excalibur's like what seven dollars? Hey, oh well, yeah, Yogmoth will one hundred and fifty. Yes, <laughs> Underworld Breach. Ooh, that'd be good in this deck. 
It doesn't have a sneak attack. I know we're playing the Perforos, but a sneak attack to get that redundancy, to get to cheat in your Blight Steels and your Dark Steels right. and your Metalwork Colossuses, Colossi. See, I'm still not paying for that card. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, but moving proper into the budget now, let's forget we're, that we mentioned any of those. If we cut okay. our Urza Saga, okay. the $40 Damnation, the Inventor's Fair, which kind of is a tutor, kind of, you know, people yeah. are, okay, sure. not always into that. Goblin Welder, 22 bucks. Yeah, go well, it's because it's good. Because it's good, right? Very good. Very good in the deck. If you play some cheaper reanimation, like even just put a Raise Dead in there and get it one time instead of turn over turn. Right. Right, you're, you're going to limit the power, but we talked about the tunability, right? Yes. So, okay. Then, the next four most expensive lands after like the Urza Saga, right? And the Adventure's Fair. Right. They're like... Two color like reveal a swamp enters the battlefield untapped lands yeah. like a like a shock land they're like nine or twelve bucks right you can keep you have those if you have them good if you don't you're gonna save some cash and in a two color deck it's fine you're gonna draw tons of cards in this deck play free basics yeah if you cut one two three four eight cards okay eight cards we're gonna cut 180 bucks from the deck 187 bucks and we could build this deck for around 375 bucks that's Again, disappointingly, about standard for a EDH deck these days. Yes. Although lots of this stuff you'll be able to find in trade binders, or they come in pre-cons, or you'll just be able to kind of find them kicking around. Lots of this stuff isn't hard to get. No. And, it, and if you do have to look for it, it's not expensive when you find it, which is great. Yeah, like... And if you just want to build it to test it out, but you don't want to invest all the money in it, let's just say you don't have it. There's so many analogs and so many other artifacts you could just play instead while you're looking for the, the, the stuff you want that, I mean, you could get a pretty good idea of whether this deck is for you yep. without investing too many dollars. And the stuff that you have invested in is stuff that's not just going to sit in your binder. You're going to be able to play it in lots of other shit. Yes. Like Goblin welders are always cool. The fi and the 15 mana rocks, like nearly all of them have come in pre-cons. Yep. So it's not like you're spending 375 bucks because you already have the cards. And the most expensive mana rock is like Talisman of Indulgence. It's like 350 yeah. And this, right? like, this is the Mirrodin one, not the one that was just released in Commander decks. Oh, yeah. Like they, all of the Talismans literally were released a month ago. Or as we like to say, four sets in a secret lair drop ago. <laughs> yes, very much so. So I think that this guy could be built for very budget and yes. so much so that I would like and I would encourage people in the nation to say like, hey, I'm going to take all of the Phyrexian Colossuses from like Urza's Saga, like the the 6-6 six, six for 8 or whatever that card is and like the Colossus of Sardia that I have oh, from, yeah. from Chronicles and all of these crappy vanilla guys that back in like 1996 were great when you when you Rochester drafted, right? right? Do you remember all of those words? Yeah. <laughs> and just build like an Imskir Iron Eater for like $14. Yeah. Like that would be beyond gumball, right? Where yes. you're paying nine cents per card and running basics and the deck still just pounds people into the just, dirt. Just puts them into the floor. Yeah. Just <laughs> puts them in the ground. Put them in the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I like this deck. I'm going to build it. I'm not sure if it's going to be combo, big creature, budget, expensive, gumball. The answer is yes. The answer is I'm going to probably play a lot. I'm really going to have to dig for those sacrifices and burnt offerings. So <laughs> I know I own them, but man, I don't know where they are. I do not. So I can't help you. Yeah. Alas. Yeah. But this deck was cool, man. I enjoyed this one. And, so, it's, and it is one where you could probably find lots of the stuff on FusionGamingOnline.com. They're a source for all your gaming needs. CCO Summer, save 5% of all that shit that you're going to buy anyway. You get your Assassin's Creed stuff. Your Bloomborough stuff is coming out, what, like d tomorrow? I don't even know when uh, yeah. that shit Yesterday. comes out. Yesterday. It's before the end of the month. I'm kind of excited for Bloomborough. I I I, I kind of dig it. And you know that I don't like the cutesy stuff. Okay, we'll I, do a little piece right here. Yeah, oh yeah, I got another thing too. We got okay, two things. Okay. We're going to talk two you, things. You know that I don't like the cutesy stuff and I don't like when magic tries to be funny like the unsets. Sure. But I know how important and how endeared Lorwyn block is in people's minds and like in their hearts and in magic's history. Which and, is insane because at the time nobody liked it. Yeah, because fairies. Because fairies. Sure. Yeah. Scion of Una is a card. <laughs> Bitter Blossom is a card. It gives me Lorwyn vibes. 
Gives me fairy tale vibes. Gives me red wall vibes because that's what it's supposed to do. Yep. It's cute without being over the top and funny. And all of the numbers on cards are like normal numbers on cards. Usually when we get like a mouse or a weasel or a cat, it's like a one one. Yep. But in this set, when everything is scaled down to a mouse being the main character, right. it's a two two or the cat's a four four or like all of the numbers still make sense. Until you hold them up against other sets when that cat that's a house cat <laughs> yeah. is a 4-4. Four, four, it's yeah. like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. But then it goes back to being kind of like quirky and silly. Like, yeah, why is 1-1-1 one, one, one? and why is 4-4? This, this four, four? It's the same thing, right? Yeah. And, and it's, it's quirky and funny. And that's kind of what makes also what makes it endearing. And we're going to get more into that when we review the set in the next, again, 15 minutes. I want to yeah. say something about this one because this is the second mainline set in a row after Thunder Junction where they've had... I think there's four or five different treatments you can get on a card, mm -hmm. and they still have the extended art rares. I think they should do away with those entirely and just make them showcase or nothing at this point. Showcase or nothing, boom or bust, and make them more rare so like you you still provide value to the people who care about that, right? That, that's just it's almost a bummer now when you open like the rare at the back of a collector boosty, and it's like a extended art foil of something it's almost kind of a letdown mm. when you can have all these cool things and I, yeah. I think that this set actually has some really 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 cool extender and we're going to get into that when yeah. we review the set but there's such cool shit and there's just this downer when it's like oh just a yeah just a card with no board oh that you sucks know, you know when right? they do like a swatch of a game worn jersey on like embedded in a tr in a hockey card like, a piece oh, there's of hockey tape there's or no blood on it this sucks yeah i want i want that but it like it's a piece of Mark Rosewater's sock, Gavin Verhey's underwear, right? Like on the card, people go nuts over that stuff. I don't know. I'd <laughs> I'd be weirded out. I met Gavin, dude. Like I don't know if I want his underwear anywhere near my. He's house. a fancy dressed man. Well, maybe like a like a hat, maybe a piece of a t shirt. I stand by what I said. Maybe some like um, used napkins. That's the weirdest thing. No, I'm just gonna. Yeah, final thought of the yeah. day. Let's let's not do that. Let's be excited for what we're excited about. Little furry creatures that live in the woods are fine. Yeah, you got a cramp. <laughs> oh, jeez. Drink some freaking water, Ryan. This deck oh. is fantastic. We're looking forward to talking about a few more, but a couple more in the queue, and we're going to do at least, before spoiler season starts up and concludes, we're going to have at least one more deck to talk about on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Ooh.